All right, hello there, thrill seekers. That was a snippet of a song called God Part 3, and this is my video in which I'm going to explain the song God Part 3. Uh, and the song was recorded uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, sometime I think in 1989 for the Dementia 13 album Flat Earth Society. And the producer is Glenn Racy from a band called Plastic Land, who had also produced Dementia 13's album Disturb the Air. And the song, I wrote the song, so I, I do a lot of covers on, on this channel, but, uh, but this is one of my own originals. And it was inspired, as some of you must surely have guessed, by the song Dear God by XTC. That song had been playing on MTV a bit, and I was already a fan of XTC. I was a big fan of their uh, Project Dukes of Stratosphere, where they did these two psychedelic albums, which I, I still think are wonderful, and I, and I like XTC a lot. And I like that song a lot. I think it's a good song, good production by Todd Rundgren, and a really uh, interesting video that they did for it too. So let me say that and make sure you understand I have a very positive impression of the song Dear God by XTC. Now I'm going to say negative things about it, but I don't want people to think it's because I hate the song. The problem with the song Dear God, as I saw it, was that it took a very sort of pedestrian outlook or pedestrian sort of position on the matter of God. It takes the same sort of position that really frustrates me when I read the works of Richard Dawkins or uh, Christopher Hitchens, uh, the famous sort of neo-atheists who inspired me to write my book, There Is No God and He Is Always With You, to kind of counter that whole neo-atheist thing. And the problem for me with a lot of that neo-atheist stuff, and it's, it's, it's like 10 years ago, it was very hot. I don't think it's quite as hot these days, the whole neo-atheism thing. But the problem was that the version of God that people like Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins were going after was this kind of you know, Victorian Sunday school God, who's this, you know, the white man with the big gray beard who sits on the throne in heaven, smiting the Peloponnesians and doing this and that. Uh, you know, God as the all-loving father, you know, uh, th this this sort of idea of God, which which a lot of people really do cling to and try to shove down other people's throats. I got the impression that uh, Andy Partridge, who wrote the song, Dear God, he must have gone to, to a, a Catholic school or something. I, I don't know his whole history, but it sounds like the reaction of somebody who's had that sort of loving father God shoved down his throat uh, all his childhood and then realized later in life that there was no loving father God on the throne in heaven and he's bitter and angry about it. You know, and this is the same impression I get from Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens, uh, to a certain extent from uh, Sam Harris. Sam Harris was a little better as far as the whole neo-atheist crew went. Of course, these days, Sam Harris has kind of gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So I don't know what the hell's going on with him nowadays. In the last few years, he's, he's just gone nutso. But maybe it's all the drugs. You know, he started getting into psychedelic drugs. Maybe they ruined his brain. And so what I wanted to do was write a kind of answer song to Dear God that took a, a more nuanced look at God. And that's what the song God Part 3 is. It's, it's sort of, I'm trying to take a, a look at other ideas of God. So the first verse kind of gets into the, to the, uh, the version of God that Andy Partridge is addressing. But after that, it goes off into other areas. The reason it's called God Part 3 is a little in-joke, which only I will ever understand. But now you will understand it because I'm telling you which is that there's a famous song on John Lennon's first 
proper solo album Plastic Ono Band called God. God is a concept by which we measure our pain. You know, that, that song. And I don't believe in Buddha. I don't believe in Krishna. Anybody, I, go, go listen to the song. It's a, it's a good song. So he had this song called God. And I found out, I read it in some article somewhere, I've never actually heard the song, that U2 had written a song called God Part 2. Uh, like they're, you know, they were going to do part two of John Lennon's song. And I thought, that's really arrogant to think you're so hot that you can do part two of, of this John Lennon song. So I thought if U2 is so arrogant that they can claim to be doing part two of a John Lennon song, I'm going to do part three <laughs> of the John Lennon song and also be so arrogant as to do part three of, of the continuation of the U2 song, which uh, to this day I still haven't heard. So that's why it's called God Part 3. So to break down the song, I, I still sing it sometimes. I'll, I'll do it, uh, I'll bust it out sometimes during lectures or, or things that I do when I'm on tour, if somebody's got a guitar. And the first part of the song is, God, he's the guy I look up to in the sky. God, he's the man with the plan. You'll be damned if you don't follow. You can be blessed. Don't transgress. Your success depends on it. Not a bit. Don't transgress a bit. That's, it kind of goes back to that. So if that is confusing grammatically. Not a bit. It is writ. So use your wit and you'll be fine all the time. Uh, that's sort of taking on that sort of Sunday school kind of God who's the man in the sky with the plan that you'll be damned if you don't follow and all of the rest. Uh, and then the line, uh, the line after you'll be fine all the time is creating time and nursery rhymes. And that came from uh, something I remembered from high school. I had, uh, uh, there was a physics teacher at Wadsworth High School named Mr. Varner, Larry Varner. If you're, if you're still out there, Larry Varner. And Larry Varner had this discussion with my friend Ron, who was uh, now, is, it was and still is a born-again Christian, about, uh, well, the Bible is, okay, it's just a book of nice stories. And I remember telling Ron, I think uh, the Bible is a little bit more than a book of nice stories. And he was like, oh, yeah, it is. You know, of course, and he means it's in the, the inerrant word of God. What I meant was it was, uh, it was more useful than just simply a book of, of nice stories. And, you know, uh, but uh, whether it's the inerrant word of God, is, uh, I don't know about that. But so so I said creating time, which is like this great thing, you know, that, that God supposedly did. You know, he created time itself and nursery rhymes. Uh, so and writing these little stories in the in, in the Bible. So that's what that's about. So the next verse is God looks like this, looks like that. I think he's getting fat. He's a cat or a rat or a man in a strawberry hat. Uh, that is just about different people's different conceptions of God. And the thing about the man in the strawberry hat is it was silly wordplay. Uh, and, and it made it rhyme with looks like this, looks like that. And the, the, I think he's getting fat was actually a reference to Buddha, Hote, the fat Buddha. But in the video, you'll see I put Ganesh in there, who's a, a, a Hindu god who's elephant, and he is, he's also kind of chubby. So I, I just used that. It was easier to edit that in than, than uh, the Hote Buddha. So that's the idea of different people's different conceptions of God that, that don't agree with each other. And then the next line is, so watch what you say. If you're gay, he might blow you away, which is kind of obvious. It's that idea of, you know, the God hates, you know, F-A-G-S uh, thing that people get into and they think that God hates the gay people. Uh, and I, I totally reject that. But, you know, that's that's in there. And then the next line, though, is, or if you're a priest, he'll at least threaten to make you deceased. That line is probably the, the, the thing that inspired that has fallen into obscurity these days and nobody remembers it. But Oral Roberts, the famous televangelist, you know, who was hugely big in, in those days, uh, had, I think, 
not too long before that song came out, he'd gone on TV saying that if he didn't raise $8 million, God had told him he was going to take him home. Uh, I mean, just mean kill him. <laughs> so uh, I thought, oh, God is threatening this guy uh, did, and saying, you better come up, cough up $8 million or I'll kill you. So that, that's what that line was about. So then there's the middle section, which is the, the heavy metal section that doesn't sound heavy metal at all. Uh, when I die, when my body's cremated, then will I get reincarnated? Or will I burn in some kind of hell or turn to nothing because that's just as well? That's kind of a, a summation of the whole after death thing. You know, you might get reincarnated. You might uh, go to hell. I figure I'll go to hell because I'm not a good Christian. Uh, I'm not a Christian at all. Or turn to nothing because that's just as well is kind of my summation of a lot of people's attitudes toward that version of what happens after you die. Because if, if you die and there's just nothingness after you die, then it's exactly the same as it was before you were even born. You don't even remember you existed. So it's, it's, not, it's not this hellish nothingness forever because you're not even there to experience the nothingness. So that's what that's about. Then the last verse is, God, who are you? Ziggy saw the, the, the mailman come, and now he's, he's a little bit worried about that. Ziggy, I'll go check the mail in, in a sec. Here we go. All right, let me finish the video. Uh, God, who are you? Are you blue, like all those Hare Krishnas said, because I hung around the Hare Krishnas. Uh, I was still probably hanging around them every once in a while at the time I wrote this song. I used to go to their Sunday feasts where they give you free food on Sundays. And they would insist that God they knew what God looked like, and God looks like this. I'll throw a picture up on the screen. There you go. He's this blue guy, and he plays a flute, and he sits on a lotus flower or something, and he has a girlfriend named Radha. Uh, there's, there's all this other stuff, so they know exactly what God is, and they'll tell you exactly. And I thought, wow, that's fascinating. You know, you're just limiting God to that. Uh, so I, I thought that was interesting. Are you blue like all those Hare Krishnas say? Or perhaps you're a man in a robe whose hair is going gray, which is the Sistine Chapel God, you know, the, the gray-haired, bearded man on a throne. Or maybe you're formless and nameless like all of those mystics said, which is what I was getting into at the time in a big way, the whole Zen idea of God who is formless and nameless and you can't even call him God. That, that's what that book, There Is No God and He Is Always With You, is about is God is so beyond any sort of attributes you can give to him that you, you, you can't even say anything about God that's coherent. But in that book, I argue that this doesn't mean that there is no God in Zen Buddhism or in Buddhism in general. It just means the I think there is. If you read Dogen's chapter Inmo, uh, which is often translated as suchness or thusness, but my teacher translates it as it, uh, he really he starts to describe this it, and this it sounds to me like a description of God, so the formless, nameless, mystical God. And then the next line is, or else you're a ghost or a host, which is the Holy Ghost and the, the host, which I never understood in, uh, in Catholicism. And then, or maybe you are dead. Actually, my friend Joe, who uh, who was the bass player on the recording that uh, I'm going to put at the end of this video, that's also the recording that's on the, the video, uh, God Part 3, um, he suggested that I should change the line to, like Fred said, you are dead, because Friedrich Nietzsche said uh, God is dead. And when I did the song later, live in, in concert, I used to change it to, and like Fred said, you are dead, but we didn't have that line at the time of the recording. And then you'll be fine all the time because you're God, and what else can you be? Because, of course, God is always fine. Hey, you forgot to talk about the counter melody. The what? The counter melody. The counter melody? Yeah, that thing that goes along the side, the main melody in the second and third verse. Oh. Yeah, that. Talk about that. Yeah, there's a counter melody. 
that uh, that you might I don't know if you noticed it or not, but it's a second ver voice that's singing a counter melody to the first melody to the main melody in the second and third verses, and it goes. Uh, let's see, the hand of God, the face of God, the arms, the legs, and the waist of God. So the hand of God and the face of God is something you always hear about. But then I added arms and legs and waist. And then I said the east of God, the west of God, God's genitals, and the rest of God. Because nobody talks about the all the other stuff that God must have if he has a hand and a face, including his, his weenie. Uh, and then, um, let's see, then the next uh, bit goes... Believe in God and pray to God. The money that you send to God goes to buy him TV sets and Cadillacs and all the rest. And that was a little dig at televangelists like Oral Roberts, you know, who go around saying you got to send money to God, but then really the money just goes to buy them stuff. Okay, let me go back to the rest of the regularly scheduled video. Right, so that's the song, and I, I think it's an interesting, to me, you know, everybody's interested in their own lives, right? It's a pointer to what I went on to do. I hadn't written hardcore Zen yet. I had been studying Zen for, let's say, seven, six or seven years by that time and practicing every day, so I was pretty committed to it, but I didn't do anything like uh, take the precepts or any of that. I just did Zen practice as my thing I did every morning and every night. So uh, I was I was already into it. I was already reading up about it, but I hadn't gone to the point where I thought I could write a book about it. So I just put a, a song out that kind of examined a lot of these ideas without really putting a pin on it. So I'm not, you know, like George Harrison would do these songs where he's like, you know, Krishna, you know, love Krishna, whatever, you know, Hare Krishna is the refrain in uh, what's the song called? Uh, my sweet lord uh, you know and he put a lot of that stuff well i didn't want to put a pin in it quite that obviously yet or ever so uh so i did that and it's sort of my little zen song uh god part three so there you go that's that's the explanation of of god part three i hope you enjoyed it <laughs> i don't know but i'll put the song up at the end of this video which will probably make people not watch the actual video go watch the actual video and give it give it some likes or something because i i, I you know it's nice to see these songs get more but you don't have to actually watch the video because you're going to see it right at the end of this one all right, so that's it for me. And if you want to contribute to me doing more of this kind of stuff, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. That's my main way of making a living, and I appreciate your support. But as always, you don't got to support me if you don't want to support me. All right, we will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. You're right, Ziggy. A delivery person did come. You want to go see what's, what they left in the at the door? You want to go check check it out? I'm gonna go check it out. All right. We'll see you later, Ziggy. Bye.